Welcome back, everyone, to Natalie is a Don. I remain your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, if you prefer. And we will have another match. Last match for today is going to be between Stuart and Filch on Titan Duel, which is apparently a good map that was or a good match that was played through the day. So we should get to that in a sec. Oh, I didn't want to have the group stuff. I want to have this up. It's getting in my way. I told it not to. Oh, whatever. Right, the game crashed. Whatever. I'll deal with stuff. Anyway. Yeah, I don't like the fact that there's like f there's already three places you can see the player names, even with team games. It's like, I just don't see the point of having that player list up as well. Anyway, let's get to the game. So, Filch going for the Cloakybot Factory, while Stuart also... No, go Stuart going for tanks. Ooh, the battle of the uh, supposedly overpowered factories. Although Cloakybot, more a matter of flexibility. They have a lot of options. Like, really good raider, really good ride, really good skirmisher. So a lot of flexible options to deal with pretty much anything, at least in the early-ish game. They don't necessarily deal especially well with very heavy defenses or a lot of very heavy units, but they do deal well with most, most everything else. Tank, on the other hand, a little bit tricky to get going with, but the Welder is still strong. They just have less strong... Oh, wait a sec. Is this an older... What is this match made? The Welder still has 7.5 build power? No, okay, they did get nerfed. This build power wasn't nerfed. That was a proposed nerf. Okay, so the Welder is still 7.5 build power. They just have much less damage. That makes sense. Alright, so, at any rate, Filch, with the Heavy Tank Factory, they should be able to last long enough in a map this large to be able to get up to a decent Kodachi Blitz army, and then possibly get up to Ogre. And that's the thing, once Ogre comes up, it's going to be really hard for Filch to do much. But, at the same time, they are going for an immediate Scythe. Ooh, that is tricky. I mean, a Scythe is not going to have the easiest time getting through a Welder, for instance, but two or three Scythes might do. The problem, of course, is that's the question of whether or not they're able to get in with that scythe, and of course, also able to find some good approach paths. Actually, there's quite a, there's a few open metal extractors that could be good options as well. So Filch, they're in an, an interesting position. They can theoretically take out a lot of stuff that Stewart has, but at the same time, Stewart also has a Kodachi and is able to burn out all these glaives to death. Like nothing is going to get through the Kodachi without being a warrior or a knight, and a knight is definitely what Filch is going for. They know how to deal with this. You can go Tick Glaive, that's a lot harder to do, but if you go for Knights, that is that is amazing. Ooh, clever! Stuart Force Fire on the Ground. That's what you want to do against against basically any cloaked unit. Force Fire on the Ground where you think the unit is, and it works! The Scythe being forced back, because, I mean, they're not cloaked anymore, they can just be hit. And nothing... If you damage a unit, it cannot stay cloaked. If you're too close... If you're close enough to the unit, the unit attacks in most cases, Phantom being the one exception, or you damage the unit, it will automatically decloak. And the scythe is, like, I don't know how it's going to be able to do this. I don't think it can. It's not a bad idea, but really, to me, the scythe is better off used going to the back lines and tearing apart all these metal extractors. There's so many naked metal extractors that Stuart has. If this scythe survives, which it should be able to, then there's the option from there. Then it can go into the back lines. Then it can start taking out all these metal extractors, and Stuart, they know that's happening. They know there's something that's going to come and kill it, but they don't know what it is. However, Filch, Filch, no! Don't let the scythe run into fire! That's a bad idea! You never want to run into fire! Fire is burning! Fire is hot! It kills things! It's also very good at keeping yourself warm and keeping things cooked, but you don't want your own size cooked! Don't cook your units! They, they're good raw! They're fine! They don't have salmonella or anything! Oof, at this point, like, two metal extractors down, thanks to that Kodachi. Then the commander as well, I mean, taking a fair bit of damage, but it's fine. Scythe's been repaired too, so at this point... Seriously, Phil, please put your scythe in the back line. Get rid of all these metal extractors. There's three metal extractors, juicy open metal extractors that nothing is defending. If that scythe got in there and was able to tear apart the metal extractors, it would be able to completely throw up, throw the game just in the opposite direction. Like, Stuart would be able, or Phil, rather, would be able to get back in this easily. Stuart would have a much weaker economy. Just a matter of, you know, reclaim, repair, re-expand, and get that scythe in the back line and start wrecking face. Because that's what it does. It goes in the back lines, makes the metal extractors die. So once we get that happening, as it is happening now, we should see Filch be able to get their way back into this game. But uh, the start definitely is very in favor of Stuart. Stuart is just, they're doing a nice job. They're, they're doing a jo good job holding this. But at this point, yeah, this is a matter of if this scythe can get back in here, because right now Filch, Filch is not in a good spot. They are not re-expanding that quickly. They are reclaiming, which I do appreciate, but they do have the contrast here. They could re-expand very easily. And that's, I've always mentioned, that's a that's the thing you gotta do as a, as a player. And they are doing that, so they are they are taking care of that. I don't know why this contrast is hanging out here. It could be assist, assist building the factory, or just going out itself and also expanding. Trying to get Phil's back into the economy is the main thrust of this. 
But there we go. There's that site taking out metal extractors. And actually doing it in a bit in an unpredictable fashion, too. I didn't... Well, I certainly didn't expect it to go there. And clearly, neither did Stuart, as there were no defenses up there. I mean, the pan the Blitz, rather, does know exactly where that scythe is going. I mean, Stuart's figured out, like, the scythe is going to be going over here. It was moving in that direction. At this point, Phil, if they double back, they'd actually be in a really good spot. Like, double back, take out this metal extractor, and maybe sneak away, and maybe take out this metal extractor, or go around the back, take out the other metal extractors. But no, it's being hyper-predictable, and that Blitz is in the way. It does spot it, though, so Phil, at least, is being mindful of where they are. And where their opponents are. But that Blitz is definitely close enough that it will be able to stop anything. Stuart, however, not able to scout it out. They, they, don't, they don't find it. Actually, they're going to be too far away. This Scythe! This Scythe has a chance! It's a small chance, and it might have blown it by hitting the solar plant first. But hey, at least it's able to get rid of something. Just needs to get thrown. Get the metal extractors! Get the metal extractors! No, going to the factory is not what I would recommend. There's no static defenses. The only thing that's helping it at this point, there are no static defenses, but it's just too little too late. The Blitz will be able to stop it. There's, there's no denying that the Blitz is not going to have any problems here. That Scythe gets it down to about a third HP. Not bad. Not great. Yeah, this is... No, I mean, it was, it was okay. Very risky. Very, very risky. Did not pay off, but at the same time, Filch was expanding while this was happening, and that is the important thing. As long as Filch was taking advantage of the pressure they were supplying, then they can at least use that to get their economy going. It's not as strong as Stuart. Stuart is still 2-1, to one, but at the very least, there is an opportunity. And now with that becoming Glaives, and those Glaives becoming a fairly strong harassment force, and able to tear apart the naked expansion, this is actually really good. This is a position that, Stu that Filch can get back from. As long as they actually harass, they just need to get these glaives around here and then rip everything apart, but they're not doing so. And actually, they're letting the welder get in the back lines. No defenses here. Nothing trying to stop it. The welders will go down to these glaives. The glaives, they, they can easily tear, take them apart now. That's not a problem. In fact, basically any forces now can take them apart. Welders can defend, them, can defend themselves against two or three raiders. Like, five seconds gets rid of one glaive. But once you have half a dozen, they're not going to work. It's not going to work at all. And at the same time, there's that... There is that Blitz Warrior combo that I was hoping for early on, and that's Filch coming in here. Very likely able to get that actual expansion, or that harassment I was hoping to get with a Scythe. Managing to get it with a Warrior Knight combo. So that's something. Got that at least. And then the Glaive's coming in on top of that. Hey, even more damage. So there you go. Filch actually getting back in here. People in chat were saying, oh man, Stewart's got this unless they throw it. But no, 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 no. Filch had a plan. Filch had a plan of harassing with the expansion in the back, and then using that to build up another force that could come in and harass even further. It's just a matter of escalating harassment until the point that damage is done. And actually, this is where the damage in the factory is worthwhile. The factory has not been repaired much. Just now the characters are coming. The glaives! All oh, the glaives! They went north! Just got to the factory! They had a chance! It's... I think it's... I think the chance is over now. It's hard to tell. And the damage... No, it's not over! The damage done by the factory is not in vain! That scythe play... No! The glaives! There's like no health left! Go for the factory! Ah! Why didn't you go for the factory? The warrior at least can... Or the reaver, rather. At least the reaver can make up for it and get rid of that factory. Hero reaver making that first sight's death not in vain. But man, it's like you went for the factory. Eyes on the prize, Vilch. Go, if you're gonna go for the factory, go for the factory. Granted, there's a lot of reclaim there. Stuart can use that to get back in this, but still. The entire south side has been wiped out. That is a massive opening for Phyllis to expand to. They can get the Conjures over here as well, and they are doing exactly that, getting the Metal Extractors built up, and that means Filch has a way back in this game. I mean, they almost didn't. They almost threw it away for, I mean, just the Metal. I mean, the Metal's still good, but they almost... They, the thing is, right now, the key reason why this is important, the factory's gone, is that Filch can rebuild. Filch has had a massive army value disadvantage this entire game. If you look at the actual army value stats, their army value... Actually, no, a slight advantage, come to think of it, but Stuart... They were able to defend well enough. But the point is, Stuart has, or at least had, a stronger... No, Stuart still has a stronger metal economy. Even with what they lost, they still have a stronger metal economy, so Filch would have had... Actually, even now they still have a stronger metal economy. So that's the thing. If that factory wasn't dead, Stuart would have been able to rebuild like half a dozen blitzes by now and wipe out everything Filch is doing, but they didn't, because Filch broke the factory. And this is the thing. It's often risky to break a factory because they have 4,000 HP. It's actually hard to break through. But that initial scythe attack did do its job. I wasn't sure about it at first, but, I mean, Filch managed to come in with a follow-up attack that they were building while the scythe was doing its job and distracting Stuart, and that follow-up attack is what, ultimately, eventually, did kill the factory. And that meant that Filch has all this time to build up. They can get their army going, they get a massive army value advantage with even or slightly worse economy. And that's meaning that Filch can now set up the entire south side of the map, 
essentially split the map in half and another wave of glaives coming in here however there are a couple blitz there's a blitz of kodachi so these glaives will have a, they will have a very difficult time actually dealing any damage the kodachi coming in here the kodachi should go down and it does blitz however is not going to go down in the process. It's just not happening. It's too much fire rate. But still, getting rid of a Kodachi for six glaives, not the best value, not in your opponent's base, because Stuart right now, they've got 2,000 metal reclaim, or 1,600 metal reclaim. That's a lot of metal to work with. Again, that's basically, they can have, they can actually have twice the economy of their opponents for a good, a good minute, honestly. If they if they were reclaiming all this at once 30 metal per second, they could, they could do that for a full minute, and that'd be more than enough. But at this point, Filch... No, they just need to get their self built up for actual economy. Maybe upgrade their commander again, because they don't clearly have enough caretakers at home. Actually, they don't have enough caretakers at home. They have a conjurer building metal extractors. Get the caretakers, please! That is what you need, Filch. If you got those caretakers, you'll be fine. Or upgrade your commander. Use Just make sure the metal doesn't excess, one way or the other. I mean, I do like the fact that Filch is harassing the north side and taking that out as well. That is good. That is the correct way to go. I appreciate it. The problem, however, is just that at this point, Filch's commander is the only thing that's really being an asset right now that's possibly building up, or at least making the economy difference not matter so much. Well, Stuart, on the other hand, they've got a caretaker. They have two caretakers plus the factory. Stuart is going to be able to turn their economy into production right away. While Filch, they do not have the means to do that. They have no caretakers. They have no workers at home. They have no additional factories, and their commander is not upgrading. So this could still go to Stuart just because Filch is not using the money that they have that they basically took from Stuart. So, I mean, I like the fact that they are trying to defend it reasonably well. It's just that, again, they could have a larger standing army if they were using caretakers. Or were using more conjurers. Just build up the conjurers. Build up the factory. Assist build is the only way you win this game. That is huge. But, at this point, Filch is just holding on to it. So, at the very least, they are not going down immediately. But now they've got half a dozen blitzes. That's a good number to get through. Like, that is a good number to break, basically, everything that Filch has built up. Especially as most of the rock are running out of position. And quite frankly, the Blitzes just get into the Ronin anyway. They, they don't really have a problem breaking apart Ronin. So right now, it's hard to say whether or not Filch can hold on. But I feel like the fact that they don't have the production in their main base is the main thing holding them back right now. If they had that production, this game would be over. Filch would have taken it. But they don't. They have the economy. They have the territory control. But they don't have the production to take advantage of it. And they've been excessing how much metal? 4,000 metal. Granted, sorry, 3,000 metal. Stuart has excess 4,000, but that was because they didn't have their factory. They had an excuse for that. That was forced. Filch, on the other hand, a bit of an unforced error in that they are excessing continuously currently 3,400, but it's just going up. Like, Filch is continuously excessing, and I just really would like to see some caretakers at home. If I saw some caretakers at home, I would feel like Filch would have this game, but there's 40 build power. All the metal that Stuart's making is going into the... or that Stuart's extracting is going into the factory... And almost none of the metal that Filch is extracting is going into theirs. I mean, there is... And there's power coming up at the very least. That's good. But again, that's not really what they need. They need to have caretakers at their factory. They need to have stuff at home. Or build some conjurers. Like emergency build conjurers. Use that. Because Filch, at this point, they got... They are accessing as much as Stuart has. Like, as much as they force Stuart to expand, they're expanding on their... Or they're accessing on their own with no help. So at this point, this is going to be a pretty... Pretty one-sided thing. Like Stewart, Stewart's got in here, but there's just not, not anything set up for Filch to be able to get in. And Filch might have a shot if they do become aware of this fact and start to rebuild or build another factory over by their commander. That might work. But even then, at this point, Stewart is coming in here. They have blitzes and very little to stop them. I like the Phantom. That is doing a good job. But the blitzes, they've got two shots left. They've got 40 seconds to live. And that should be fine. That should be more than enough. Except the fact that blitzes don't actually self-heal. I was, that was, I was confused with the Kodachis. Kodachis do self-heal, blitzes don't. And on top of the Ogres and the Minotaurs coming in, yeah, there's just not much that Filch has. I mean, Filch had a great push. That, that harass was awesome. They got in, they got the Metal Extractors, they wiped out everything Stuart had done. It was naked expansions all the way to the western side of the map, and Filch caught on, took it all down. I loved it. The only problem, of course, is that Filch did not turn that into production. And now they're doing that now, but this is really pushing it. Like, they only have 23 metal per second now. They lost a bunch of the metal they had built before. That went all to excess. They do have car conjurers now. They are getting caretakers now. But this is, like, five minutes too late. There's an outside chance they might be able to pull this back. With the this, this Phantom at least being able to one-shot the Blitzes and, and heavily damage everything else, there is an option there. But there's just not enough metal. Like, Filch, at least they have that in storage. Like, there's something there. They have the build power, they have the metal, the storage... They could last for maybe 30 seconds, like really building 30 build power or so, building up to the economy that they had before, but that's about it. 
And that's a bit of a shame, too, because really, Filch, they had a position to win this. They were in a great spot. It was just a matter of whether or not they would actually turn that metal advantage into production. And that's always what it comes down to. You need your territory advantage to get a metal advantage, or to get a resource advantage. You need a resource advantage to get a production advantage. You need a production advantage to get a military advantage. And then you use that military advantage to either win the game, or if you can't quite win the game, to secure more territory and keep that cycle going. Filch did the first two steps. They got territory, well, they got military, they got territory, and then they got economy. A great job with that. If it was a game of score, if it was a point scoring game based on how much metal you collected throughout the entire game, Filch would actually lose, come to think of it, but they would still be in a really good spot for that one section of the game. But it's not. It's a game of destroying everything your opponent has for production that you need to use military for, which you need to have production of your own, which means you need economy, but the production is the key bottleneck that Filch didn't quite manage to get through. So a bit of a shame there, but Filch at least is able to reclaim enough that there's some hope of being reasonably even. It's just Stewart has, has had several minutes of being at a massive economic advantage and having 40, at least 40 build power into their factory. That just has meant they've had a massive army. Like this Minotaur coming in here, it is only one unit. That's actually kind of surprising that only the one unit is coming in here. The Knight's doing a great job dealing with it. So that's the thing Filch has. They do have great unit composition. Like between the Knights and the, and the Phantoms, there is a good shot at getting rid of the Minotaurs. But at the same time, there's just so few metal extractors left, and Filch has burned out all their storage. Not to mention the Reclaim is not really in their base very much. They do have some. They could send one of the Conjurers out here and grab, like, I don't know, 1100, actually. It's not bad. And once the Minotaur dies, assuming the Minotaur dies without the game being over, there is an option there. But again, Filch, I mean, their commander is in a tight spot. Their, their Reclaim situation is not great. It's all they have, really, but it's not great. They've lost both Caretakers. Oh, and now they've lost... Okay, well, that's at this point... They've got the metal per second they can. They've got the build power for the metal they have. But they don't have the caretakers. And with that, I do not see any way they can get back in this without just completely pulling off a miracle with reclaim. If they can get enough reclaim. And again, they have a lot in their base. They have like 2,000 metal in their base. They could theoretically reclaim most of this. And that would mean they'd have even economy with Stewart for about 30 seconds. Or no, for about a minute. Actually, they have a minute of being on par with Stewart. If they were to reclaim everything that they have in their territory. So there's a, there is an option, there's a shot that Filch has, but I don't see it, especially now that we have an air factory coming in from Stewart on the northeast side of the map, Raven's coming up, going for that commander as they always do, no anti-air is up either, Filch does have the caretakers kind of built around the map at least, they could theoretically drop a factory right here, although given the fact that the Ravens are right there, not the best option, but still, they have caretakers around the map, it's just a matter of, you no, know, build more caretakers, get that, get that production going, that is super important, Filch, they're like, Oh, they're not in the chat right now. If they were in the chat, like, seriously. Caretakers. Caretakers to avoid excess. Caretakers to use the metal that comes in, especially with the reclaim. Like, they have everything else. They have the power infrastructure. They have... They had a decent amount of metal. They have the reclaim fields that they're taking advantage of. But they don't have the caretakers to actually turn that into production. It's like, that would win them this game. They would probably... I don't... Like, they would probably have their ladder position go up by, like, 200 LO if they just built caretakers regularly. Just made absolutely sure that they had the build power that in case they reclaimed 10, 20 extra metal, they could easily turn that into units. If they had that, they'd be they'd be golden. Otherwise, they lose their commander to Ravens that are sne sneak built because they they couldn't take out their opponent with the economic advantage they had. But yeah, that is... That is huge. Like, that is a huge part. And it's like, Filch has everything else. The thing is, a lot of players, they will build the caretakers, but they won't necessarily have the energy economy, or they won't have expanded well enough. No, Filch does both of those. Filch has a lot of clever plays. That, that scythe play at the beginning, leading to the expansion, that was really smart. I mean, I don't... Like, the factory thing, it paid off ultimately, but it was still a little bit risky. Didn't quite pay off as ideally, and it could have gone wrong, but it was a gamble that did pay off. And the overall approach was great. The only downside is that once the expansion was taken, once the money was taken, there was no production. It's so close. Like, that is the one thing. And I'd love to see Filch get those characters up, get that production going. Because if they had that, they'd be a great macro player. They'd have an amazing amount of macro. Like, they know how to expand. They know how to set up properly. They, they have some clever strategies if they're behind at first and need to sneak in and wreck their opponents. They know unit composition quite well. It's just production. Production, production, production. That is the only thing that really made a difference there. The amount of production, given the amount of metal income, because, I mean, Filch had this advantage, they are even to an advantage, and this entire stretch, this entire stretch, lines up with where the excess was happening. If that excess didn't happen, Filch would have been down here for excess. Would have, however, at the same time, been up here for army value. Like, 
This advantage here that Stewart had three minutes, or yeah, three-ish minutes later in this stretch would have been over here for Filch. That's the thing. This spike would have been here and it would have been blue. But instead, we have this line of excess. That is the difference that it makes to have the production. That would have been everything. So that is, that is the thing, Filch. If you're watching this, you are on the cusp of being a great player with everything else you do, so long as you remember to build caretakers or workers to assist build your factories. If you do that, you're like, you're really well on your way. Every other part of the game you seem to have a reasonable hang on, a reasonable handle on. It's just assist build production. That's the only thing holding you back. Get that. I'd love to see what you do in a tournament. Anyway. That being that, I'm going to call it because it's been a couple hours, actually. So I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you all for watching. And again, normally, as always, I'm going to be I'm going to be doing Monday again. I'll be doing Mondays as well as, as Saturdays. Monday at 7 Pacific Daylight Time, which is, I think, 3 a.m. UTC. So, yeah, super early in the morning for any European viewers, but late, you know, after work for any North American viewers. And, yeah... Until the as long as the viewership stays up, so yeah, probably put that in the promotional videos or promotional art stuff, probably mid to end of May, because assuming it holds on that long, and then I think tomorrow might be Quake Champions. I don't know. I I expect so. Anyway, I w might be doing Quake Champions tomorrow. I definitely will be doing Zero K on Monday, and. And then, yeah, and of course, Battle Royale. I mean, the stuff's on the promotional. Just Monday. Monday is the main thing you should know about. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a good night. And see you next time.